Hello and welcome to the final whistle with me, Daniel Watson, looking back at Hibbs 0 0 draw with Molda on Thursday evening. Coming up, James Delaney and I discuss the match, Neil Lennon speaks with Hibbs TV, and we also have the post match thoughts of Ryan Porteous. No goals, but let's remind ourselves of some of the highlights with Hibbs TV's Cliff Pike and Keith Reed. Malin just outside the 18 yard box goes for the shot, it's it! Oh, it's off the crossbar! I think the goalkeeper might have got a touch on that, Keith. He if, he, done if he did, that was a terrific save from Andreas Linda. Stevie Mallon from about 25 yards out saw the keeper just off his line. Yeah, the goalkeeper is getting a pat in the back there from Ruben Gabrielson, so it suggests he just got fingertips on that. No more, knocked it onto the crossbar. And it'll be inside the Hibs half to Hogan, faced down by David Gray. Hogan's ball into the box, chance here for Strand. Well cut out by Paul Hanlon, and his clearance. Ends up in the arms of Ross Laidlaw, but Hibs are caught out a little bit at the back there. Malin will deliver this corner from this near side, right-footed in swinging. Out towards the edge of the six-yard box, the header is... Oh, what a save that is from Andreas Linder. I think it was Ryan Porteous, Keith, Keith was it, that got the header in. It was David Gray. David Gray, was. right, right down beside the post. Taken quickly by Stevenson for Malin. David Gray's in behind. Knocks it down. Chance there. Emerson Hindman is blocked. What a save again by Linda. Andreas Linda has been an absolute star tonight for Mulder Keith. He's kept him on level terms on more than one occasion. That was a terrific effort by Emerson Hindman. James 0 0 against Mulder. Hibbs, maybe not necessarily the better team, a very even match, but Hibbs with the better chances and certainly still all to play for going into the game next week. Yeah, Hibs, uh, maybe not the better team, in, in, but certainly not the worst team. Um, it was very even, I thought, um, for a lot of that game. Um, we had some decent chances. They carved out some decent opportunities. It was really just about who was going to take it, I think. Um, you felt the one goal would have settled that game. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get any of them. Uh, you know, I thought we were we were unlucky not to not to score. Um, similarly, we probably were a bit fortunate with a few breaks of the ball that Malta got. Um, but all in all, still all to play for to go over to, uh, to Norway uh, next week um, it's going to be a difficult task but I certainly don't think it's going to be impossible you probably got the comparison spot on mm. um, we, we, early on we were both sort of comparing it to the, the Bromby game over the two legs but towards the end that was just taking me back to 2005 2006 and the first leg against the Pro yeah. where you just felt like there was chance after chance and you just wonder if the missed chances would be something that Hibs will rue yeah I mean you know the, the chances that we that we did create and you know we did carve out um, they weren't necessarily easy chances to take uh, you know their goalkeeper didn't look particularly convincing in the first half but had a much better second half and made two really good stops um, from, from David Gray and from Emerson Hindman uh, so <sighs> You know, it's it's one of those where against Nipro you felt the Nipro got really lucky because we hit the post a few times. Here we hit the bar, perhaps slightly fortunate to hit the bar. I think a better keeper might have had it, um, to be honest. And it, maybe not, you know, quite as as easy chances we created in that game, but it did feel like, you know, it was a real opportunity to score. We didn't quite manage it, but again, you know. Optimism isn't something that comes to us naturally as Hibs fans, but I think I saw enough in that game and we've seen enough over the past few games that we can at least go and match them, um, and that gives us a chance. Yeah, um, and I think it's something to remember. We've obviously seen 10, 15 minutes of Emerson Hyman. I think he'd done enough to show that that's a pretty shrewd acquisition one great sort of cross field pass even just to get that shot away in the volley took really good technique hopefully everything will be okay for Thomas Aguipong playing or featuring at some point in the, the return game so it's it's a team that alright we've, we've, we've gone a few minutes we've not mentioned the, the John McGinn word yet we'll kind of touch on that after we go through the game um, but there's maybe an element of the unknown for Mulder there who obviously also lost a key player today as well yeah absolutely and you know it's it's almost bizarre in, in the way that the two teams have sort of mirrored each other um, where you know they've lost their star player if you like and we've lost ours in a way um, you know I thought we were very evenly matched on the pitch um, I thought man for man they looked more organised than us um, and they certainly kept the ball very well and and um, you know looked like a side that were very comfortable in possession but 
at the same time they still look like they're mistaken them you know they still look like um, you know I think well, I think both sides really looked like they were one bad pass away from disaster at times um, it was there was that really sort of odd game where you know it was almost who was going to blink first um, and in the end we just end up staring at each other this isn't quite a metaphor that I'd planned but I'm running with it now <laughs> you know it's it, <sighs> You hate this. Well, I hate to say again that it is all to play for, but um, you know we certainly shouldn't uh, look at that trip over to Norway as you know. We certainly shouldn't be pessimistic about it. Anyway, you know, I, I definitely think we've got enough about us to, to go over there and at least give them a game. Yeah, and I think probably the main positive to take from this is that a lot of talks been about the Hibs defence in the last few weeks. Um, I thought between F.A. Ambrose and Ryan Porches both had a, a real shout for man of the match. Ryan Porches probably edged it as the best player in the yeah. park for me. But Ross Laidlaw had one save to make, if he could even call it that, mm. and it was a header straight at him the second half. And that's all testament and something that Mulder will have to kind of worry about next week when they're expected to be on top. Yeah, Mulder's threatening moments really came from, you know, them keeping keeping possession for you know a long time and then, you know, quickly sort of threading the ball through and it was kind of half chances rather than, you know, clear cut chances. That one that I think it's Sar gets his head to Yeah. Um you know, it almost looks like he doesn't quite expect the ball to come through to him. Ah, and if he's just maybe bounced off yeah, of him, didn't it? Um, and if he's maybe sort of, you know, a bit more proactive and he's actually challenging for the ball, he probably absolutely bullets it past uh, past Laidlaw. But I mean credit to Ross because he you know he had to be quick off his line there. There's plenty of players in that six yard box and he's he's come and grabbed it. Um so fair play to him. But yeah you're right, I mean that was their only real sort of uh, clear cut chance. They didn't really give Laidlaw much of a test but you know, at the same time, it's going to be a different, uh, a different side that we're playing over in uh, in Norway, and um, playing on their own pitch, and um, playing in their own stadium, um, in front of their own fans as well. Uh, I know there was a sort of contingent of about forty of them, or you know, made it over and uh, today, but it will be a, a different side we're playing against. Um, but you know, again, certainly weren't sort of any better than us, um, and, and weren't any worse than us. It is just going to come down to. It feels like one of those games that it's going to come down to one goal or, or one moment. Yeah. So I take it back to the beginning. Two changes for Hibs: Ross Laidlaw and for the injured Adam Bogdan. Slavka returning the team for the the now departed John McGinn, which still. <laughs> Just feels. <laughs> I just, uh, um, it's too soon, mate. Yeah, it's too let's, soon. let's just go over it. Um, so, Hib started really strongly. First ten minutes, uh, Martin Boyle gets in wide, puts in an early cross. Stephen Mallon hits a bar with a tremendous effort from 25, 30 yards. Slivka has an effort that goes close. And the first 10, 15 minutes, Hibs were, were well on top. Molda then just kind of settled into it. Uh, Ikram had a beautiful through ball to the back post. The ball comes in and Hanlon clears it straight into the arms of Ross Laidlaw um, Malin again goes some distance but the, the goalkeeper was one of a few that he maybe wasn't so sure about and uh, I, I thought the first half was really enjoyable um, two technically sound teams just kind of sizing each other up it was um, you know we talked about sort of uh, cliches um uh, half time on, on Hibs TV and that really was it was sort of a, it was a boxing match it was two boxers sort of circling each other for the first six rounds and uh, you know without really throwing that many punches um, yeah, Malin's effort is, is fantastic I kind of wonder if you know Linda didn't look confident really when the ball was being hit from distance and being hit with power uh, Slivka has a shot as well um, so on his left foot where uh, I think you know yeah. another goalkeeper or you know a goalkeeper more comfortable certainly would have I think held it he spilled it we just didn't have anybody in the box um, there's another one that he sort of he, he just sort of palms it up in the air I, uh, I had visions of Cammy Bell for Rangers against Motherwell yeah that's that exactly what spun it was up the, uh, um, it was one of those where you just didn't know where it was going to land and fortunately for him it lands just wide of the post and um, Allen has another one that he kind of, you know, he goes down and he saves it, and Gray and Boyle are both closing in. I think it's Gabrielson gets in and, and knocks it away. Um, so it was that was obviously something that you know, I'm sure like Neil Lennon and Gary Parker and, and the scouting team would have picked up on is that Linda's not particularly, you know, comfortable from distance. In Stevie Mallon, we certainly have you know a player who is very comfortable shooting from distance. They're getting a bit close this time. Uh, <laughs> One of them has a burger and is just getting chased by the rest. Yeah, and he's now flying up here. 
we one of the uh, one of the Molder players was uh, warming down earlier and was running, and one of the seagulls obviously flew in a little bit low and nearly took him out. Which uh, <laughs> Ryan Porter still just coming short. Well, I charge these true. seagulls out of the stadium. Is any of this getting kept in? <laughs> None, not a bit. What was I talking about again? Yeah, sorry. In, in Stevie Mallon, we have um, a player who is certainly very comfortable from distance. So obviously, you know, we've added that to, to our game, even though we have lost quite a big part of our midfield. Um, so there was there was early signs really that probably weren't any better than us and we were probably going to get chances but at the same time you know every time they got the ball they'd, they'd keep it um, and pass and pass and pass and you're getting up to sort of 20 30 passes and a move and then they'd suddenly just sort of spring and that's obviously the way they like to play uh, i thought ikram was was very good in the middle of that pitch he was spraying the ball around really well um uh, chiwa i think is the he was playing as the lone striker was, say, yeah. uh, i thought porsche sort of handled him well but he looked he looked energetic and he looked like he was the kind of player who was going to you know cause defenses a few problems if they got tight to him so you know it was it was very sort of finely balanced and it, it, it was that sort of thing it was one mistake or one you know miss hit pass or miss hit ball and suddenly you know the game completely changes um, so nobody was quite able to capitalise on that more from James and I shortly but let's hear now from Neil Lennon speaking with Hibs TV Neil I suspect there's a little bit of disappointment there tonight in that we didn't win that game the mould the keeper I think was the difference between the two teams tonight yeah I think that's the only tinge of disappointment really it was a, it was a good performance against a very good team so you know, I think the team showed great maturity considering their inexperience. But we had the better of the chances, no question, and we were unfortunate not to take a lead over there. But um, I think the tie is still very much in the balance. There's not much between either team. In a European game, a goalless draw at home isn't a disaster nowadays. It means that if we can score over there, and there's every likelihood we can, it puts the pressure right back on Mulder. Absolutely. You know, it's great to keep a clean sheet. Unfortunately, you know, we came up against a goalkeeper who was, you know, inspired. The save he made from Steve even to touch it onto the bar it was a great save and um, two great saves second half there wasn't many clear cut chances in the game it was yeah, very tactical and they wanted to take this thing out of the game and they did that very well at times but um, I've got to applaud my players they showed great maturity tonight and um, some really good quality at times as well Ross Laidlaw you brought in in place of Adam who was injured didn't have an awful lot to do but looked reasonably assured come, uh, happy with his performance yeah I'm happy with all the performances really you know um, we know Florian's carrying a bit of an injury and maybe he's not 100% and we need him 100% certainly for next week but the rest of the team I thought Malin was outstanding you know and um, Boyle was very good Ambrose Poaches so we a lot of positives to take from the game and we're still very much in the infancy of the infancy of the season and also in terms of European experience so um, I think we can be very very pleased that we're still in a big shout of making the next round the first game post John McGinn but Marvin Bartley and Vicente Slivka in the middle of the park there they, they bossed it I thought they were very good yeah I thought Vicky was dynamic he sort of maybe faded a little bit towards the end which you know you have to remember this team's 16 games into their season and we are what one so there is a bit of a difference in overall fitness and you can just tell they were starting to tire a little bit towards the end uh, but Marv had another very good game solid game so yeah a lot of positives Cliff you know it's not the end of the world you know the dressing room's a little bit down but I'm saying to them look we're very much in this and you have to believe that we'll score over there we have done in Greece you know we've done in obviously in the Faroe Islands and we were set up the score goals plus McLaren you know still to come into the mix didn't want to make too many changes with the tie being in the balance the way it was and didn't want to disrupt the flow but we had to get some fresh legs on with 20 minutes to go and young Hyman nearly won us the game yeah. it shows a measure though of the confidence and how far these lads have come that you're saying they're disappointed in the dressing room after a performance like that against a very good side yeah we have to take like I said we have to take a lot of puzzles we, we set high standards and the players adhere to that so you know they were looking a little bit down harder but um, in a day I'd say they'll be fine we've got another game at the weekend obviously to prepare for so the turnaround's very quickly but you know I said them look I'll take 0-0 at half time mm-hmm. and I will and um, we'll go there and endeavour to you know we have to show a bit of maturity again out there and a bit of nice and obviously try and pick our moments to score goals You managed to bring Emerson Hindman in last night just at the death what do you see him bringing to the side? Well creativity I think he's well balanced um, I liked him at Rangers but he was only a boy then I think we're 18 months down the line and you can see he's physically matured a little bit but he's a very good footballer and you can see that in the 15 minutes he was on again he only joined us last night so couldn't give him too long in the game 
15 minutes we felt was, was enough and he showed enough quality to, to add to my thinking that he will be a, a benefit to us going forward The games are coming thick and fast St Johnston now on Sunday before we go out to Norway will it be a case you'll be looking to freshen things up again at the weekend? I think we'll have to yeah you know, we'll have to see how they are tomorrow they're in tomorrow and a late session on Saturday and um, it's just difficult at this stage of the season but we're in the competition to progress and that's what we want so um, again we'll have to make some changes there's no question that we'll have to see how Flo is we'll have to see how Marv is he went down with you know, a bit of a spasm on the back of the leg so uh, yeah it, it may be a case of freshening things up but we brought some players in to do that I think that pretty much summed up the chances in the first half I think there was a corner that Chima looked like he had a free header he puts it wide Ambrose done just enough to put him off so yeah the second half starts uh, Brian Porteous gets an early yellow card I think I've put a note of it it's taking one for the team times 10 to the power of 50 it is <laughs> yeah it's, I mean it's totally I really respect Ryan Porteous not even really making an effort to get back and tackle the guy and just pulling him back uh, fair play yeah. <laughs> fair yeah. play to and uh, it just seemed to be the case that in this game uh, every break of the ball every kind of misplaced first touch from either side every 50-50 tackle with the ball went loose it just seemed to fall to Molda and that's another thing that next week every bounce and every break can't go their way again yeah. Or, or well, it might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be fair, yeah. You may be unlucky, yeah. but um, I mean, that was it, really. It, it was just kind of. Um, it almost struck struck me as two teams who weren't really willing to lose, but at the same time weren't really willing to throw everything at it to win. Uh, so not long after Porteous gets booked, Ikram somehow doesn't get booked for a taking one for the team tackle. Um, Slavka plays in a great through ball. Martin Boyle just gets a toe poke on it. Yeah, it went agonisingly. It was close. one of those where it just it sort of trickle wide. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then not long after that, I think it's a corner to Hibbs. David Gray has all the time in the world to leap pick his position out and when it's a big game like this and David Gray isn't scoring and is becoming really unlucky you're starting to then think it's maybe not going to be your night yeah it's a really good save you know we, we kind of criticise Linda for his ability from uh, from long range that header was from about 15 yards and it, I mean it's right in the corner I, even when he went down for it I thought it had gone over the line I thought it was in um, it's a really really good save right in the corner um, and it, it was that sort of moment where you just thought I don't think we're going to score today um, you know it, I think at that point it became about not conceding and, and making sure we were you know, going over there with a, a clean slate but yeah it's, uh, it was almost written in the stars that the uh, the renaissance would, uh, would continue yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know he what, was going to what is there beyond goal. the sun would he just become Emperor Grey at that point oh I don't know Lord Commander yeah. uh, <laughs> how has he not got that title already well, really? yeah. it just rolls off the tongue that's true Lord Commander Grey uh, so Martin Boyle has a shot blocked it just kind of sat up perfectly defended on well around about the 70th minute is when uh, Sar has that header that comes straight lead law that's their first shot on target and just maybe that last 20 minutes whether it was fatigue or nerves or mm. just the tension of the whole stadium the quality just sort of dripped out the game yeah. and it just became that kind of very both teams not wanting to make that mistake it was very um, very, very yeah it was you could almost you could feel it sort of you know like every time there was a loose ball in the midfield or you know, there was a ball in there you thought oh he's not going to win that oh he has it's alright oh that pass isn't going to make it or it has it's fine um, you know it just it was a real real sort of tense atmosphere um, you know, it was again it was two teams sort of playing not to lose rather than playing to win which you know I think is in this sort of situation is probably warranted for us I think it's it's frustrating not to get a goal at home and it was frustrating not to be able to sort of create that one kind of clear cut chance where we thought this is it um, obviously Linda makes that save and he makes the save from Heinemann in the last minute which is good as well yeah um, um, but it it did feel a bit sort of tense at that point. It did feel a little bit touchy. It, it did feel you know one thing was going to swing it, one mistake, one uh, through ball that you know from Vikram or, or Malin or whoever it was on either side was going to was going to swing it. And it just in the last twenty minutes never really looked like happening. Um, both teams were still attacking, but now you know neither was really willing to commit five, six players forward to go and get that winner. Um, I think you could probably tell it was going to be nil-nil 
roundabout then to be yeah, honest yeah I think in that last 20 minutes um, in terms of we made the two changes Marvin Bartley comes off so does Flo Camberry uh, Hindman comes off his debut Oli Shaw also comes on in the last five or so minutes both from the right and the left David Gray and Stevenson put in vicious crosses really dangerous balls and there's not a single hip mm. jersey in that box it's like a throwback to the Stokes and Murray days where it's all nice on the edge of the box and the build up's good but there's no one there and I think that was maybe a sign of the apprehension of midfielders not wanting to commit themselves forward um, Ollie Shaw has space in injury time he goes for the dink through ball when the shot was maybe on but inexperience and the crowd kind of right on your back waiting yeah. to see what's going to happen and then Gray's flick on in injury time great technique from Heinemann as I said earlier just to even get the volley away and it's, it's a great save and not long after that the final whistle goes yeah it's a, it's a good strike by Heinemann it is, it is good technique he sort of fires it into the ground um, and manages to keep it low as well um, obviously makes it more difficult for the goalkeeper when it's, it's coming up off the turf like that good save by Linda again um, but again you know we're talking about sort of Molda getting the break it, it sort of spins up and I think it, it bounces off about two Hibs players and goes out for a goal kick yeah, uh, when yeah. another day it might have bloody hell what was that a wolf it's like a drachidome anyway uh, yeah. yeah obviously um it bounces up and it hits two players and, and goes out for a goal kick rather than you know bouncing off somebody and ending up in the net or going out for a corner. So it's just that one sort of bit of luck. Obviously next week uh, hopefully we'll be a little bit luckier. Um, it's a different pitch that we're playing on. I believe it's a hybrid pitch um, at the Acker Stadion. Um, so it's not sort of fully plastic, but it's sort of part plastic. Even if that's not right, I'm impressed that you know the name of the stadium. Oh, thanks. I've been <laughs> somebody who was in Greece last week. I still couldn't tell you the name of that stadium oh it's not just the stadium no it was named after a person but it was really long and I was on the Twitter updates so I just kept calling it Tripoli <laughs> it's really good that we're able to go to Europe and immerse ourselves in the local <laughs> culture like this and uh I mean, I'm not going to sort of sit here and pretend that I'm an expert in the Norwegian league and, you know, I watch it religiously. I don't know what Molde are like. I don't know what the Acker Stadion's like. I know Scotland played there a couple of years ago and predictably got absolutely hammered, but that's, you know, that's always going to happen. By watching this game, Molde are a decent outfit, but certainly no better than us. Um, and I know that we did tend to struggle a little bit on plastic pitches last year. Um, obviously, albeit, you know, we won 3 0 at Killy away, then had that 2 2 at Killy where we probably should have got beat one all at Hamilton where in fairness we were unlucky not to not to win it and, and probably should have taken all three points from that but we didn't you know that's obviously got to be a factor I think the difference you know, between this game and the game last week is these are two teams who've started their season you know Triple S were still a few weeks away and that maybe sort of played it in our hands a little bit where they probably maybe not up to 100% that certainly doesn't take away from the performance because it certainly you know required a performance of you know that manager and digging in uh, like that to, to get the win and we deserve all the credit for that so uh, but you know Mulder I think are around about halfway through their season at this stage um, yeah there's seven I've looked at the table earlier there's seven yeah um, they've played the same at European games as us we've now kicked off our season as well so in theory we should be getting sort of around about match fitness in fairness we have you know Emerson, in Emerson Hindman and Jerry McLaren two players who probably aren't quite there yet if we have Thomas Akupon back as well he's unlikely to be you know up to speed um, quite yet but at the same time you know like I said already we certainly didn't look any worse than Mulder tonight um, didn't necessarily look any better than them um, and it, it is you feel like it's going to be one of those games where if one team gets an early goal <sighs> the entire complexion of it changes but going by this we might be in for another another very tense 90 minutes and now here's the post-match thoughts of Ryan Porches talking to Cliff Ryan that was a tough battle out there but the boys acquitted themselves well and the manager says disappointed to only draw the game aye uh, some of the lads heads in there were a bit down and the gaffer said look get the heads up because you know we performed really well we, 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 we could have you know, possibly should have won the game but you know that's football they uh, rode their luck at times and like, we limited them to very little chances don't like Ross had much to do other than with the ball at his feet and we defended set plays for, uh, you know, for our life and we, uh, we dealt with that really well so now ultimately we would have liked to get the goal and take the lead over there but listen we've stopped him getting an away goal and you know that, that's an advantage for us so we take it over there and we, we try and beat them over there There's every likelihood that we can score across there and if we do that will put the pressure back on them Aye definitely you know it, the gaffer says if we keep a clean sheet we will win the game but uh, obviously the day that never happened but 
we always know the capabilities that you know our forwards have in the the kind of areas, and now that we've got you know Emerson in, that only adds to the quality. So, you know, if we can get him fit and maybe he can play a part in the game, I, even like he did the day, you know, you've seen it flashes at him. He, he, he played all the way through and he had a great chance at the end. So you see the kind of player that he is, and he's only going to add to the quality that we've already got. You had a tough battle out there with Daniel Chima, their number twenty-seven, but I thought you won that one. Yeah, I, mo- most of the focus was on the the other boy Haaland that obviously didn't play the day so it was kind of uh, we had to kind of look at him last minute to see what he would be like so we looked at him and we obviously seen that we were going to get a tough game uh, you know he's a big physical lad and but to be fair I thought, I thought we'd done well against them but as I said we limited them very little you know the wingers as well the wingers are, we looked at them on video and they were they were really good so now credit to the defence in, in the midfield in front of us as well but you know if, if we just got that, that one goal that we you know we just never got the, the, the luck of the ball and the luck of the bounce at times but that can happen in football but the main thing was that we, we kept it tight at the back and we've got a chance going over there Sometimes you come up against a goalkeeper who's just in one of those moods that he's not going to be beaten and I think Anders Linda their goalkeeper was in that kind of mood tonight Hi, Dave said that I was away celebrating so was he so yep. you know it's a great save to even to save it and never mind to hold it it was a it was a great save so credit to him as well but you know we're putting great balls into the box and at times you know for, at times it flows in the great positions as well it's just no bouncing for unlucky or it's no form for a second they're putting bodies on the line to be fair so you know it wasn't our night in front of goal but uh, as I said we're we're taking a positive uh, attitude going over there and we've, we've got something to play for the key is and will be defending well across there in Norway and we did that tonight you know yourself Paul Hanlon and Effie at the back you know well in control of what was going on Effie in particular I thought was just imperious he has one of those nights where he just drops the shoulder one minute he's on the edge of his own box the next minute he's halfway inside their half I, I get summed up at the end but he took on like four or five men and done unbelievable and then just gave away the last minute but nah he's, he's brilliant you know he's one of the defenders that doesn't always you know, talk to you but he, he's always in the right positions to deal with something if you're not there and he, he will lead by example you know, not in the way that you know a normal probably captain would do, but he's a, he's a good professional in the way he goes about it. So, and Paul's the exact same, but Paul obviously does give you a lot more uh, advice in that. But no, obviously it makes my job a lot easier playing beside uh, two you know model pros and obviously Dave and Louis on that side. So it's an ideal situation for me to be in. And as a young player, games like that tonight, playing against different types of players, huge learning experience for you. I definitely, you know, you playing against uh, you know Scottish opposition is one thing, but you know getting that experience against a top level European side is only going to benefit your development and now that uh, I'm trying to push on and try and get into the first team that can only help it You're giving the manager a headache you know, you can only go out there and, and give your best you've been doing that and Darren McGregor was sitting in the stand tonight he'd be thinking he's a bit difficult getting back in the side <laughs> Nah, you know Daz a, a club legend and he's uh, a great defender so we're hoping to get him back you know, as soon as possible if that's Sunday, if that's Thursday but uh, so we're, we're missing him but um, Nah, it, listen. It, I've always said that I wanted to just be ready for when the when the gaffer needs me, and hopefully over the last couple of games I've showed that, that I am capable. So I've just tried to give him a bit of food for thought. It does show how much nowadays though, the game is a squad game. You know, you, you've got to have players, as you say, that are there ready to come in. We've been fortunate that we've we've had that when we've needed it. I the gaffer said it's a fourteen man game. You know, uh, every game and he will use the squad, and he, he done that. So it just shows the fitness again of the squad. You know, Paul Hanlon's played every game, Louis played every game, and uh, it just shows them. Like, shows you them can, that, that age to still be doing that is brilliant at the moment the games are coming thick and fast midweek league games St Johnson on Sunday that'll be a tough one up at McDermott Park Aye. It always, it always is over there eh? so uh, we've got to just focus on that game now obviously we, we have to kind of you know, in our heads we're like focusing on more but we've got a small task uh, yeah, St Johnston away so it's, nah, it's going to be a tough one over there so it'll, uh, it'll be good And is that a case with so many games that the, the kind of training is cut back a little bit it's more sort of rest relaxation massage making sure that knocks get dealt with Yeah sometimes you have to get away from football a little bit so you'll obviously be in but you try and forget about the football side of things and just let your body recover but you know the, the squad's fit enough to deal with that so although we've had three three games in a week we'll still deal with that and we'll hopefully go to St Johnston uh, full of it it's been I think well on Sunday's podcast we talked about how it had been uh, probably one of the most positive and eventful 96 hours um, this past 24 36 hours have been, I'm not going to say they've been negative, they've still been incredible, but it's it's new, dare I say, new emotions and, and new feelings. So um, many emotions. And yeah, emotions is the word. I have never, and I doubt I ever will, well, that's a lie. 
somebody made the point earlier that we've still got to go through this with guys yeah. like McGregor and Hanlon and Stevenson and so Gray I, 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 can't, I can't bear thinking but about that. But these days will never come. Yeah. But what what can you say that hasn't already been said about the now departed John McGinn? Uh, I'm not even sure I should try. Uh, I mean, certainly, you know, from from my point of view, and um, admittedly, it hasn't been quite as long as others, but he's one of the best players I've ever seen uh, playing a hip shirt. Um, he will go down as a legend. Um, as the rest of the cup winning team will. I think McGinn in particular, there are very few players that have had quite the same sort of connection with the fans that John McGinn has had um, or did have and, you know, put in sort of quite the same performances week in, week out, had exactly the right attitude um, from day one. Um, He's just an absolutely fantastic player and Aston Villa should count themselves very lucky that they've got him. Um, You know, I think it's... It was really telling sort of yesterday, just reading through Twitter and, you know, looking at not only the replies from the Aston Villa fans, um, but the replies from the Hibs fans who were just, you know, congratulating Aston Villa on the yeah. signing instead yeah. of saying, you know, this is ridiculous or, you know, they've stolen him off us. It the, was, it was, was more, no, well, well done, to be fair. Uh, there was no Nan patter. There, there was, was no, no tin patter. pot league patter. It was, it was just this kind of weird mutual harmonious thing between two, yeah. set, between two sets of rival, well, different clubs on Twitter. That's not, that's not supposed it's to be not a thing. Normal, that's, is it? uh, yeah, it's really not normal. Um, and it, it feels like we've converted an entire sort of city into or half of an entire city into, into Hibs fans and in the same vein you know there's suddenly 17, 18,000 Hibs fans or what was it 17,000 here tonight roughly just on just about 16 and 16 a half 16 yeah. um, you know who are going well maybe I'll just set that little notification for the Aston Villa score yeah. uh, well you know. it's there was the Sunderland game on Saturday they played Charlton and I was going to watch it and then I seen Dylan wasn't starting didn't bother yeah, and I think that'll point. be the same with Villa games it's exactly and you know John McGinn has all the talent in the world he is talented enough to go down there and you know really make a great career for himself um, he's he's virtually accomplished everything up here um, and there's very few players who can say that out with you know Celtic or Rangers really um, in the, as per Celtic really in the last few years they've accomplished pretty much everything um, you know John McGinn's won the League Cup with St Mirren he's won the Scottish Cup with Hibs he has won a league with Hibs not the yeah. league with Hibs but a league with Hibs Championship sounds high up exactly it does um, you know he's, he's played in Europe and put in some unbelievable performances in Europe and had some brilliant nights there and you know for him to now sort of have the opportunity to go in and help Aston Villa get back into the Premiership which I think we're probably fairly safe in saying Aston Villa are a Premier League club and um, that's where they probably should be yeah Um is, is brilliant and obviously now gets to sort of showcase his talent and, um, in I think what is pretty much the richest league in the world um, and I'm sure if he sort of plays uh, with the same sort of uh, intensity and enthusiasm for Villa as he did for Hibs then whether he wants to stay at Villa or not there'll be plenty of clubs uh, lining up to, to add him for some ridiculous fee you think the, the McGinn factor had an effect on it was quite a, a tame atmosphere mm. especially in maybe the first 10-15 minutes but again as I've already said it's kind of new emotions new feelings I don't think we can quite grasp the magnitude of the situation we're in just now especially when you look at the result in Minsk tonight yeah. and they've put four past Senate I, I said it to you at half time on Hibs TV that there's no way Molda and Hibs players aren't seeing that and regardless as to how mm. and daunting a prospect Minsk could be if it's the team that we get through and if it's the team that, that, that all that stuff it's all this and this has really opened up and in the back of every fan and every player's mind is hang on like this could really happen well I mean that's that's it and you know obviously we have 90 minutes possibly more to get through against Molde next week um, and obviously in the same way that I'm not an expert in Faroese football or Greek football or Norwegian football my knowledge of the Belarusian league is not particularly good I think I got a regen on football manager from there a couple <laughs> of years ago who was good Um so I don't kind of know what standard Dynamo Minsk are. It could have just been a really off night for Zenit St. Petersburg. They could take them back to Russia and absolutely annihilate them, yeah. which, you know, all of these could happen. As it stands now, though, you know, I'm sure Neil Lennon will be and Gary Parker will be sitting down with the players and saying, look, this is the situation we're in. This is how close you are to what for us, you know, 
given what could happen if we got through to the group stage and given it what it would bring in and what it would mean for the fans and the players could be as good as a cup win maybe not as good as the cup win but definitely good as a cup win yeah you start to your imagination does start to run away with you when you sort of see the, the men score and especially I think if we had won here tonight it would have been well who goes automatically into the group stage oh it's AC Milan it's Arsenal it's yeah. Chelsea um, you know it's Sevilla Betis uh, Villarreal I'm not going to run through every single team in the group stage but you get the idea um, you know, there's plenty of big sides in there and plenty of a teams that I never thought I'd see us play and B grounds I never thought I'd see us play at um, you know so that'll be in the back of everybody's mind um, as what an opportunity this is at the same time if it doesn't come to pass fair enough you know, I think we've given this a, a really good crack dug in for a real good performance in Greece and a real good result in Greece we have the opportunity now to, to go over to Norway and and you know do it all again but we have that opportunity and we still do have that opportunity um, and it does still mean that in mid-August we're talking about him going through in Europe which you know, two or three years ago would have been a completely mad well, prospect that's it I said again on Hibs TV at half time three years ago yesterday so the 8th of August 2015 Hibs lost 2-1 away to Dumbarton in the championship um, for us to come on it's just thinking about everything in that last three years and then looking forward there was Motherwell which you obviously talked in depth about the other day on the podcast and this is giving you hunger for more all of a sudden you're kind of feeling like we, we belong here like this this is something that we should be doing year in year out yeah absolutely and it's been it's been fun you know that's the only real sort of word you can use to describe it, it has last half an hour last week was fun. Well, fun. yeah obviously that, that wasn't fun was torture that was a bit tense although yeah, I'd had a bit by then so it was <laughs> fine um, but no I mean yeah it, it has just been it has just been fun it's been good to be you know speculating over who are we going to get in this draw what are they like how much do I know about Asterisk Tripolis uh, who's Mulder's best player you've, you've just watched me cancel a hotel in St Peter's and we've looked at the price of flights to Minsk on Skyscanner you you, you just can't help but let yourself get carried away exactly and you know it it does feel a little bit like counting your chickens because you know we've now been through I don't know how many minutes on this podcast I can't quite see the time and we haven't mentioned the fact that we actually have a game on Sunday against St Johnston which you know (laughs) feels like it's uh, bringing us back down to earth but that is that is the norm for us and this is completely out with the norm Um, so you know we still have to get through that game on Sunday we still have to you know, putting a performance on Thursday, but we can dream, and uh, you know that's probably the the best way to be thinking about it just now. So that'll do us for this week's episode. Extended highlights from Thursday are now available, with the rest of this season's games, as well as a huge archive of other classic matches and exclusive footage on Hibs TV. Next up for us is St Johnston away on Sunday, with tickets available to buy now. Until next time, my thanks to James Delaney as always for joining me. A massive welcome to Daryl Horgan, who has signed a three-year deal this morning. I'm off now to follow the Aston Villa match. Uh, They've always been my English team as of Thursday. Uh, Thank you for listening and join us next time on The Final Whistle.